This is Federica part of the DocCity team and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this live webinar of Bocconi University. I remind you all that you can type all of your questions into the Q&A box and we will be answering during the second part of the presentation. And it's my ple pleasure now to leave the floor to Veronica Basteno. Thank you, Federica. Thank you so much for the, for the introduction. Uh, and thank you guys uh, for uh, for being here, um, listening in to this uh, to this presentation. So as Federica said, my name is Veronica. I've been working for um, almost ten years now in uh, Bocconi Guidance and Recruitment Office, uh, which is the office um, actually in charge of uh, uh, giving uh, information to students uh, um, interested in knowing more about Bocconi uh, and possibly also about applying to our uh, programs. Uh, today, the presentation is uh, uh, specifically focused on our Master of Science programs. Uh, these are two-year programs in the areas, uh, I would say, um, uh, mostly connected with our um, areas of expertise, so economics, management, finance, uh, but also political science and data science. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be giving you an overview. Uh, obviously, I'll try not to bore you too much, let's say, uh, but um, I want to uh, just give you uh, a few hints about Bocconi um, uh, history and also our DNA, uh, especially for those of you who uh, are not necessarily familiar uh, with, uh, uh, with us. Uh, obviously, I'll be um, super happy to introduce then um, two of our current students who are uh, available today uh, to share their personal experience uh, of being Bocconi students. And obviously, I'll be more than happy to uh, answer any question you might have uh, later on. Um, so let's see. Um, when, uh, we, uh, when we talk about Bocconi, we try to highlight uh, some characteristics, uh, some features uh, that we think are um, very uh, important and that uh, and they are defining the experience that we, uh, uh, that we aim to deliver to our students. Um, starting from um, a very uh, rigorous uh, academic uh, um, background for any of our programs, um, coupled with uh, um, innovative teaching methods, uh, a network sustaining Bocconi, we normally say that this network is composed of three main pillars, uh, our partner universities, um, our, um, let's say, partner companies, so the employers that work closely with Bocconi, and our alumni network. Uh, an experience that we try to uh, offer as um, in an international setting, and this is uh, thanks to the student body, to the faculty, um, there are uh, more than 100 nationalities represented on campus. A campus which is uh, uh, dynamic, although for sure you will have questions about this, and I will, uh, um, I will, I will uh, be happy to, to give you some more information. This is a very peculiar situation we are living. So for sure, the campus uh, uh, is less uh, lively than it used to right now. Uh, but actually, we are very exciting because in two days, our students will be back on campus uh, following, we, following all the, uh, let's say, safety procedures uh, and all the safety measures. But they will be able to go back to, uh, to campus thanks to um, uh, let's say a series of measures that Bocconi has implemented for their uh, for their return. Um, I I'll be very brief on the history. Uh, was just uh, wanted to uh, just wanted to highlight um, a couple of aspects. Uh, so the fact that we are a private not for profit university uh, that we've been founded more than a century ago, uh, and that economics specifically was. Uh, uh, let's say very much uh, um, our foundation, and it and it is uh, it still is at the core of all our um, programs, uh, whether they are ma in management or they are in political science or in data science. Uh, we tried um, uh, to deliver programs with, that uh, keep an aspect of uh, uh, being interdisciplinary, so always connected also to to economics. And as you can see there, interna internationalization is a very, um, another very important aspect uh, that has been characterizing uh, Bocconi for, uh, for years. So if this is our history, um, 
when we look at Bocconi today, we look at a university, uh, well, not such a, 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 a small university after all, we are now uh, going towards uh, 15,000 students. Uh, among them, 5,000 students are international students, including visiting and exchange students. Um, as I was telling you before, more than 100 nationalities on campus. Uh, so something that we are very uh, keen on, uh, creating an, uh, an environment which is as welcoming as possible and as supportive as possible to our international students. Uh, and this is to give you a few numbers. Other important numbers uh, that uh, some students consider when making their um, uh, higher education uh, decision, I would say, is uh, for sure uh, rankings. Uh, now, I would say that uh, the opinions about rankings can be very, um, very varied. <laughs> um, I would say that we are quite pleased to be performing well on this ranking. Uh, we know that it is a metric um, and as such, it should be uh, in terms of what this ranking mean, uh, they, they, you should know the criteria that are taken into consideration, uh, but we feel like they are useful in uh, um, summarizing the effort that the university uh, puts into uh, delivering a program uh, which, which has the, um, let's say, the highest possible value for our students. Um, these rankings they, uh, take into consideration, for example, uh, the academic reputation of the university, uh, as well as uh, the strength of the career service. So they give you a sort of snapshot into uh, how we are doing and uh, again, the efforts that we are um, uh, putting into, into the programs. Uh, some rankings then, uh, let's, let's say, take into consideration uh, um, specific disciplines or, or, or or more subject areas, others take into consideration a specific master program, such as finance and international management for the FT ones. Uh, but I won't be reading the numbers uh, for sure. I just wanted to uh, give you our opinion on how to, how to look at these numbers. Uh, and let me see. Yes, so here um, I take this opportunity to introduce you um, uh, one of the two students who's joining us uh, today. And I do um, on this slide because uh, Tiago actually came to Bocconi um, uh, for an exchange semester uh, during his bachelor. And this led to his choice of uh, um, applying for uh, NMSC at Bocconi. And so I wanted to uh, I wanted him to uh, to tell you a little bit more about his experience uh, because this is something very common. Um, you uh, should consider the fact that in most of our master of, um, of science programs, students have the possibility of spending a semester abroad or even a double degree abroad. Uh, specifically, thank you to this uh, international network of uh, almost 300 partner universities uh, that you can very well see are uh, spread out uh, in basically all, uh, all continents. Uh, so I'll let you go a little bit on this, Tiago. Thank you, Veronica. I hope everyone can, can hear me quite well. Uh, my name is Tiago Guardão. I'm 23 years old at the moment, and I came from Portugal, as Veronica said. I studied at Catholic uh, uh, from Porto, uh, more, more precisely, so, so I'm from Portugal. Uh, and at the time, so I was studying management uh, during my bachelor's degree, and uh, on the third year, usually people try to do an, uh, an exchange semester because it adds uh, quite a lot to your curriculum. And o not only that, but it adds, you, it adds to your personal value um, as, a as a future professional or as a friend, um, as anything you, you might want to be. And therefore, uh, Bocconi was the best university that my, my, so my bachelor's degree, my program had to offer. And so it didn't, didn't take me quite didn't didn't take me quite uh, the time to apply. I immediately took the decision and applied to Bocconi. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get into the into the exchange semester uh, in Bocconi, and I can tell you that was uh, probably the five best months of my life. Uh, Bocconi is not only a, a very good university; uh, it also has an excellent and very varied community, and you will learn from everyone, and you will be able to teach. Um, 
as well. So meeting other people is not only good for yourself, it's good for the other, for, for other people. And at Bocconi, as Veronica presented before, as a very varied, very wide community with lots of different nationalities and people from the most diversified backgrounds. Uh, I saw there people asking, um, do uh, what about physics? Can I get into Bocconi with a physics bachelor's or, uh, or a, I don't know, informatics or a, a computer science? Uh, what I can tell you in a very broad sense is that in my master's in finance, the one that I'm taking right now, uh, there are people from the most diversified backgrounds. And so if you really want to do uh, a certain master's or a certain bachelor's degree in Bocconi, you for sure can. So don't hesitate to apply. You also have more than one option, but Veronica will get uh, deeper into that, I'm sure, uh, later on in the presentation. I wanted to tell you about the differences between Bocconi and other universities. And one of the, the biggest reasons why I took time to apply not only because it's one of the best masters uh, in the world in the whole world uh, in case of my masters we have lots of good masters degrees and bachelor's degrees as well but uh, the teaching methods are quite different and they differentiate themselves by giving some extra points that uh, sometimes give you the opportunity to get maximum grade and even cum laude which is what they call what the italian in the italian uh, they call like outstanding grades so you go beyond the maximum uh, objective of the course, which is the 30. In this case, cum laude would be a 31 out of 30. And um, they don't take into, into consideration not only, they take into, into consideration not only your exam, which uh, in some cases might be 100%, but they give you the opportunity during the semester of doing uh, optional handouts or optional work uh, for you to get extra points in the end. So basically your final exam would be still out of 30. Uh, imagine you would get 29. Uh, if, you do, if you did an optional assignment during the semester, we'd get an extra point and you would get the 30 out of 30 that you always wanted, uh, if that's your objective in the first place, which is something fantastic because it gives you the opportunity, like a mistake in the exam doesn't determine your uh, total knowledge of the, of the course. So they give you the opportunity to show that during the semester, which is uh, very good in my opinion. One of the reasons why I wanted to, to come to Bocconi as well. Uh, I will talk about clubs in a bit, uh, but to finalize, last but not least, um, I wanted to talk about the possibility to enroll in a master after you've taken uh, the time uh, to do Erasmus here in Bocconi, because I did Erasmus and I got some, uh, uh, so I got my grades, and then in the year after, I got an email saying that I could apply to Bocconi using a special route of a special route of admission because I had done the the, the bachelor's degree. Uh, exchange semester in Bocconi and I got good grades so they gave me the opportunity to talk about uh, to 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 apply to Bocconi uh, do, uh, using this special admissions route I ended up doing the GMAT anyway uh, which will you'll um, get to know very soon uh, but that's something that I can answer um, after this just to to end the city is amazing uh, people are amazing uh, the um, Milan feels like a Porto so very familiar to me it's a small city, but big at the same time with uh, lots of diversity and you get, get to know the city in, um, you, you, so if you want to take your time to know the city, you can, uh, but uh, you will never get lost in the city and it's, it feels very safe to be in here. So even with this COVID thing, I was talking about crimes and other stuff, but even with COVID, uh, I feel safe being in Milan and it's something that I, um, that I advise for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tiago, for, uh, for sharing this. Uh, so I take this opportunity uh, while I had some time to read also your questions to give you just a, a quick recap of uh, topics that we'll be covering so that you know obviously what to expect. I should have done this at the, at the beginning. Uh, so I'll give you a brief overview uh, of Bocconi. Then uh, I will tell you a little bit more specifically about our MSc programs. And obviously at the end, we'll get to the very practical information about admission procedures, uh, fit, fees and funding. So uh, for sure, we'll cover all those, uh, all those aspects as well. And, and as someone uh, asked it, uh, so no, you do not need to know any Italian uh, to apply to Bocconi because uh, most of our masters are actually offered in English. Uh, so you do not need any, uh, let's say, previous knowledge of Italian when, uh, when considering Bocconi. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, this is uh, uh, something that I would like uh, um, 
uh, Leah to, to, to share uh, her experience a, a little bit. Um, well, Leah is actually uh, doing her internship right now. And I will tell you uh, later on that the, the internship is actually one of the compulsory elements uh, of a Master of Science program. So it should be done in the two years of the program. And Bocconi has uh, um, a lot of activities that accompany you uh, in, uh, these, uh, in this journey to securing uh, first an internship and then uh, a job after graduation. Um, activities that are put in place by our career service, um, recruitment events, uh, now they have turned online, um, meeting with companies and so on. But uh, I don't want to spoil any of this, so I'll let uh, Leah uh, tell you um, a couple of words about this. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's very nice to meet you all. My name is Leah. And as Veronica was saying, I am at the moment doing my internship. Um, I'm a student in international management. So right now I'm in my second year. And this is usually the year when you do your internship. So luckily, Bocconi is very flexible. So you can be doing an internship for six months, three months, 12 months. It depends a lot on how you coordinate it yourself. Um, I'm doing an internship actually right now at Nike. And it's been a great experience. And of, Bocconi has actually provided a lot of support when I needed also help to find an internship. So I'll talk a little bit about the opportunities that Bocconi provides. So not only is Bocconi very well connected with a lot of employers, there's also a lot of events. And you're probably thinking now with the corona that it's probably not the same and that there's not as much support. But actually what I found is that Bocconi adapted extremely well. So even now that I'm in, my internship at Nike, I still attend sometimes certain in-company trainings that are online because Bocconi has really made a very good transition from having all these events that used to be on campus and now they just move the events online. Of course, it doesn't replace human touch, but we are not expecting this situation to be completely permanent. And for now, it's still great that there's the effort and then you can connect with current employers, especially as the job market is not getting easier, it's getting harder. And when I was on campus last year, I was very lucky to participate in several events. For example, I participated in Baconian jobs before it became virtual Baconian jobs. And there were so many employees there just off the top of my head. We had uh, McKinsey, we had Salesforce, we had PwC, several banks. And I'm sure you're aware as well that Milan is the capital of fashion, but also the capital of finance and banking in Italy. So you get to connect with all these great employers such as Luxottica, you get to connect with a lot of investment banks, a lot of banks, you get to connect with the Prada group. So it's really a very good experience. And I would encourage you that if you are on campus next year, if you do make it to Bocconi to attend these events, to bring your CV, which I think is something that can really add a lot, bring your CV and show how you're qualified already for certain positions that you're interested in. A lot of people are there and you can ask so many questions. And a lot of them will also be alumni from Bocconi because the company, uh, Bocconi, has so many alumni in all these great companies, so it's also a great chance to connect. I also attended a couple of events from Amazon, for example, that Bocconi was sponsoring on campus. I attended several recruiting dates. I attended the one for fashion, luxury, and honestly, it's very fascinating, and it's great because Bocconi provides all these events throughout the whole year, and there's flexibility in terms of the scheduling that you can go. So sometimes you have a recruiting date. Okay, I can't make it, I have a class, but then they'll provide another one next week and you have that opportunity. And before, and I think this will be something that we'll pick up again. We also had several, you could go, for example, Bocconi jobs in Paris, and then you could actually go to certain cities and visit that. And they would be specialized in a particular country or in a particular industry. So whatever is your interest, if it's more towards arts, towards retail, towards media, there will definitely be a recruiting event on campus that you can use and that can really help you with that. And I would also really advise to reach out also to the Career Center because they are actually extremely helpful. They give you great tips on how to apply for jobs within Italy because, of course, a lot of companies need Italian, but not all of them do. And they give you tips on how to personalize your CV, how to do great at job interviews. So I think you'll feel most supported and I know plenty of people that have managed to secure internships also through Bocconi. So I definitely would highly recommend in terms of employees and alumni relationships, Bocconi is extremely well connected. And I think for me, I please, uh, please ask as many questions as you want on this, how I got my internship, what I'm enjoying it, 
what I got from the events, I'm more than happy to answer them all. <laughs> Thanks, Veronica. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Leah. That was, um, I think, a very, uh, very complete explanation of what we what we offer and what students can get out of uh, of this. Um, so, if we go on uh, with the presentation, uh, well, um, this uh, you can find easily on the website of employers that they are obviously very connected with the areas um, with our subject areas, uh, and this gives you, uh, let's say. An idea, an idea, it's a glance of the result of all these uh, activities by the career service. Uh, as you can see, um, students need uh, normally three weeks on average to find a job after graduation. Uh, one third of our students walk abroad uh, after graduation. Um, and uh, obviously then uh, you, can, uh, you can see the, average, the, the, the percentages there as well. Um, if we go ahead with the, um, with this, uh, I'll, uh, we, we can focus more uh, on the Master of Science programs. Now, I won't read the, the whole list. Uh, you can easily find this. Uh, I just wanted to highlight the fact that we have uh, 12 Master of Science programs taught uh, in English. So that's the first um, message. Uh, the, the offer is very wide uh, in English specifically. So there are no, no barriers uh, concerning uh, language. Um, some programs are more uh, general, I would say. Others are more uh, specific. They focus on a, um, on, on a company function or on, a, um, on an industry area. Uh, so again, it really depends on what you are looking for. But even the general ones, they give you the possibility to specialize in the second year. Uh, so they, they, they still give you a sort of, uh, of path uh, to enter the, the, the job market. Uh, and uh, if, if we look at uh, subject there, uh, fields, let's say fields, fields of study as a whole, um, uh, you can regroup those under management, economics, finance, and recently um, we've introduced also political science and data science. Um, something that all these programs have in common is uh, a structure, um, a main structure, I would say. So we said two years. Uh, in the first year, you have uh, mostly the core courses. In the second year, uh, students choose their elective courses, uh, either uh, picking a major, uh, which is a sort of a specialization uh, path, or uh, they pick their electives uh, freely among the um, whole uh, Bocconi offer. They can uh, apply for study abroad programs, so they can integrate an international um, experience, uh, whether it is an exchange semester or um, a double degree, spending the whole second year abroad. And then there are um, two foreign languages in the study plan. Those are actually, uh, one of them is English, but it's a sort of a, a, a professional English um, seminar. So it's, it's mostly a, a sort of a, of a business English seminar. And the other one instead is Italian. Uh, because we actually require all our uh, non-native Italian speakers to have Italian in their study plan, uh, because uh, we want them to to do, um, let's say, to, to bring home something from uh, their master uh, the master experience in Italy. But also we want uh, to facilitate um, uh, to, to facilitate them if they then want to uh, start their career in Italy and, and uh, looking at jobs also. Uh, uh, among Italian companies, and that, that might help them. Uh, the internship, as I was mentioning before, uh, is, uh, uh, is a mandatory part of the uh, curriculum. Uh, it's a, a three-month uh, internship, normally, uh, that can be done in the summer between the first and the second year, or during the second year itself, because as Leah was saying, second year is very flexible, so you combine the internship, uh, the study abroad, the electives, and then we conclude the, uh, the master with, uh, with a thesis. Um, obviously, this is what goes on on campus, uh, sorry, in class, but there is also a lot going on on campus beyond the classes. And I specifically refer to two elements, uh, which um, I let uh, um, um, our students explore a little bit. So on the one side, we have a campus which is very integrated with the city of Milan. And then on the other si um, side, we have a campus which is also very active. Uh, so Leah, do you want to tell us something about your experience uh, in, uh, in Milan? Yeah, happy to cover it a little bit. 
um, I'll talk just a little bit about my experience of the city of Milan in general. So Milan's a great city. I think in terms of um, living in Italy is one of the cities where, for example, the public transportation will work the best. You have great facilities, so airport super nearby, very easy to get to it. It's very well connected, tons of flights. As I mentioned before, when I was talking also about the internship, it's the engine of Italian economy and industry. So you will have several major companies there, such as Luxottica, the Prada Group. Um, you will have a lot of banks. So you will definitely feel very much integrated. I remember one of the first weeks that I arrived when I, my first year there, I remember the Milan Fashion Week very well. And then you go and you see everyone super well-dressed. So you feel very much in the atmosphere of the city. You feel the fashion, you feel the culture. It's also very big on aperitivo, which I don't know if you guys know what it is, but it's a great little concept where you can pay for one drink and then you can have a buffet of food. Of course, this will be something for later on in terms of COVID, but the quality of life is great. There's facilities, there's parks. If you enjoy running, if you enjoy going to the gym, sports, it's very well equipped. There's also, I remember, if, for example, if you get sick, it's very easy to access the hospital and to find a doctor that will speak English. So that's also not a point of concern. And overall, everyone can help you in English. Of course, Italian would still be preferred and you should definitely try to learn because it's a great language. And at Bocconi, they also encourage you to learn, which for me was great because I definitely picked up a little bit of the language, but you do not have to worry about that because there's definitely a very international community and they're used to doing things in English as well. A little bit more, there's also, it's a student city. So of course there's Bocconi, but there's also a lot of other universities around. So it's also easy to connect with other types of faculties and other types of students. Furthermore, as the environment is very hustle and bustle, everyone coming and going, it's very easy to make friends, meet new people. And Bocconi does a great job in connecting you from the start with like exchange students, there's Facebook groups. So that part is definitely very easy. In terms of Milan, I think it's also a city that in my opinion, is very lively and has a great sense of culture. So when you're walking around, you can feel the museums, you can feel Italian culture, but you also feel that it's very modern and fresh and crisp and that there, there's always a lot of things to do in terms of the, I mean, this is all before COVID, pay attention. When I talk about bars and I talk about restaurants, do bear in mind that I'm talking pre-COVID, but it's the same everywhere now. So I think I can make this assumption and talk about the city a little bit more in the past reference but it's definitely a very lively city. And I think it's also a city that's growing and you can feel it and you can feel the change, you can feel the environment of business. So I definitely had a very positive experience. And I think if you apply and you end up going to Milan, one of the advantages that I think Bocconi has, which a lot of the um, universities that are more in the top rankings do not, is that it's very central in the city. So it's so easy to connect with the city itself while some universities you actually need to take a train to get into the city center. So I think in Milan, because it's right in the center of city, you can walk to Duomo, which is like that beautiful cathedral in Milan, and you're there in 10 minutes. So you're very much experiencing the city and the companies in itself. Please feel free to ask any questions that you have about living in Milan, finding accommodation, overall how I enjoy the city. I will mostly only speak positive things. Thank you so much, Leah. Uh, then uh, this is, um, say, my turn in asking uh, Tiago a little bit about uh, his experience, uh, experience on campus because I know it's been, uh, um, he's been very actively involved uh, in our campus life. Uh, but before doing that, let me just answer Rodrigo because I, um, uh, I want him to have the, the full picture of what uh, we are presenting today. So today we are mainly focusing on uh, Bocconi Master of Science programs. These programs are uh, called pre-experience programs, meaning that you do not need uh, necessarily work experience before uh, applying. Um, on the contrary, most of our students come straight from a bachelor or maybe after, I don't know, one year of one gap year of working or doing internships uh, and pay attention to the fact that uh, uh, that, that's quite different in the different uh, countries and educational systems. MBAs in, it, in Italy uh, specifically, they refer to post-experience programs where you would need, uh, I would say, um, on average, five to seven years work experience. So it's something you do um, uh, a little bit down the road after you've already worked for some years and you need to, you know, so, uh, let's say, upgrade your skills uh, for a career move and so on. 
Uh, but if you're looking for the content of an MBA, so what you're looking for is management skills uh, and you haven't had all those years of work experience, keep in mind that the master that Leah is doing, the one in international management, uh, is um, it has a similar, I would say, a similar mindset, a similar outlook, but it is designed for recent graduates or for students coming out from, from the bachelor. But then we can give you more info on, on this. Uh, let's go, Tiago, first on, on the campus. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So I would like to speak about my experience uh, in campus uh, besides the, uh, the experience that I have uh, on classes in my master's in finance and besides the, the, the exchange semester that I had. So when I came to Bocconi, I was uh, very eager to involve myself in the community. Uh, and I don't mean only uh, learn Italian, but uh, engage myself in the community in very different ways. Um, being part of the student ambassador team that gets uh, contacted to do these types of events is one of the things, one of the ways you can get to meet lots of people. Uh, and Bocconi is very keen on that. So they give the opportunity to students to uh, in, involve themselves in the, in the community to a whole different level. And the student ambassador team is one of them. Uh, besides that, I immediately applied to Bocconi Students Consulting Club. So I'm very into consulting and I really want to work in consult consultancy in the future. So I applied to Bocconi Students Consulting Club, which is a very um, old um, club in Bocconi, but uh, don't mind me, old in a positive way, of, of course, because it's very structured with a very bright people uh, that can give you lots of help and lots of knowledge. Uh, there are very, each club has their, their own uh, specialty, of course. Just to give you an example, so in Bocconi Students Consulting Club, uh, I've just been promoted to, to be a part of the board member just after six months because uh, they really give you the opportunity. So if you involve yourself with the club uh, a lot, uh, you can take the most of it. So you take from a club uh, whatever you put into the club. So uh, that's what I, what I like to, to, to say. And basically the club has a system of buddies and eat. Every week we get to train with our buddy, uh, solving cases, business cases in this case, because it's consulting, uh, and then to train for interviews. Uh, besides this, we have a, a huge group of people uh, from the club with alumni uh, that work in the best companies in the world that are uh, very keen to help uh, our current uh, club members and the ones that are not. So you, you create a very wide uh, network of contacts of people, of very bright people that might uh, help you in the future and who you might help as well. Uh, and so we have, let's say, for example, week, once a week, we have a training and each training is on a different topic. So for example, let's say we are solving uh, cases that are related to profitability. We'll have a training just on cases of profitability. This next week we'll have a training regarding the, uh, the mental health and, and high, um, so high stress jobs, for example. So very wide stuff, but you learn a lot. And then I'm also a part of the Bocconi Students Private Equity Club. Uh, so uh, as many of, of you guys might know, uh, private equity is sort of the, the pinnacle of uh, management of uh, strategy and finance. And it's sort of like in the interception of management and finance, which is something that I really love to do. I'm sort of more to the, to the side of management, but finance as well, because I'm taking the master's in finance. And uh, so I see the clubs as a way to improve your knowledge and to add up to your knowledge, sort of like a, the Kung Law, the experience, you know, so uh, you, for you to get the 31 out of 30 from your experience at Bocconi, you for sure need to, to engage with clubs and not only, so do not dedicate yourself only to the grades because uh, you will never forget these years if you involve your, yourself with the community a lot. Um, I'm also, at the moment, I'm also the student representative for the Master in Finance, uh, and it's a very, very uh, satisfying job. Uh, quite, uh, quite the work you have to do, uh, depending on the, on the situation, of course. Uh, but uh, right now, I'm very, very proud to be uh, able to represent the students uh, within our, the director and every professor. So I just came out uh, of two reunions to meetings for uh, because of an exam and uh, you get to meet uh, great people other representatives from other master's degrees you get to share great ideas regarding the university uh, people and especially professors are very uh, very open to um, to feedback from from us and that's that's very good we this semester we had lots of um, 
So lots of suggestions implemented in the masters due to the suggestions of the students. So this is a this is just to show that uh, Bocconi really implements the suggestions of the students and is here to help the students. Thank you, Veronica. That's all for me. Thank you, Tiago. I definitely agree with uh, uh, what you said about uh, the campus experience uh, really rounding out the whole uh, um, the university experience overall. Uh, okay, so let's uh, dedicate, I would say, the next uh, uh, 10 uh, minutes to uh, the most uh, practical stuff that you might uh, want to know um, in case you are considering um, a Bocconi Master of Science program. Uh, so, first of all, um, well, obviously, uh, as most universities do, we have an online application. Uh, it's an online application that has been open since the last fall, so it is uh, currently open and there are still uh, three application rounds to go for the September 2021 intake. Uh, it's an online application where students can apply to uh, up to five programs. So uh, if you have one specific interest, you can uh, apply it straight to that. Uh, instead, if you find more than one program, which is interesting in our um, MSc offer, you can list your preferences, uh, uh, up to five preferences in the online application. Uh, the online application needs to have three elements for sure in order for it to be um, uh, evaluated by our admissions office. First of all, we need uh, um, a GMAT or a GRE score. Obviously, considering the current uh, circumstances, we also accept the, the online version of GMAT or GRE. Um, then we evaluate uh, um, students' GPA. So we ask them to upload their transcripts uh, from their bachelor undergraduate studies uh, in the online application. And then we, I would say, we, we round out this evaluation of the, the test score and the GPA with uh, the evaluation of their profile overall, uh, meaning CV and personal statement, where they explain why they are applying to that specific or those specific MSCs um, at Bocconi. Uh, students can also submit a video presentation. Uh, this is optional if they wish to give uh, some, let's say, additional uh, uh, information about themselves uh, to, the, to the admissions office. Uh, I will show you rounds in a little bit. I just wanted to highlight that in case the first application is not successful, you actually have the possibility of um, reapply once in the same academic year um, in, our, uh, in our selection process. Uh, we have some programs that also need some additional elements of evaluation, but if you agree, I wouldn't go too much into details of these. First of all, you can find those on the website. Secondly, I would be more than happy to follow up by email. Uh, we will write it in the chat later on. It's graduate.services at uniboconi.it. So there we can handle any uh, personal discussions. Uh, if you want to, uh, to know more, if you, if you have any doubt, this was just to give you um, an overview. Um, as I told you, we still have three rounds uh, for the September 2021 intake. Um, specifically, they will be in March, April and May. There will be the three deadlines. Uh, however, pay attention to the fact that if you are a non EU student, uh, a non EU student uh, then we normally say uh, to avoid the fifth round uh, because you have uh, um, the results uh, quite late uh, into the, into um, uh, going into the summer. So uh, that normally poses some constraints for um, visa procedures and so on. Uh, we, you also see there that we have different deadlines for the double degrees of the politics and policy analysis uh, program. But again, I don't, don't want to uh, fill your heads with the dates that can be easily uh, found, uh, found online. Um, and here we come to uh, uh, some very important information that you were also asking about uh, uh, in the chat and in the Q&A. Uh, so Bocconi fees are 14,000 euros per year. Um, this, uh, this is normally paid in three installments throughout the academic year. Uh, there is um, a first installment that is paid if you are admitted at the moment that you decide to enroll and confirm your place you are asked to pay 2,000 euros as an advance of the first installment. And then in, during the academic year, there are um, the other installments. Uh, Bocconi does provide um, 
a, a, a financial aid system to support the students. Uh, our financial aid system is uh, mainly um, um, destined to um, merit awards. So it's the ones that you can see on the left of the slide here. Uh, it's the merit awards, uh, which are full tuition waiver. International awards, uh, uh, these are 50% tuition waiver. And then women awards that are specifically targeted at uh, um, female students uh, admitted to our MSc in finance. For these three awards, uh, students do not need to fill in any separate application because all students submitting their application to our programs are also automatically considered for the merit awards. So when they get their results, they also get an answer about the scholarship and they can make their decision whether to enroll or not, also taking this aspect into consideration. Uh, if we look at need-based scholarships instead, um, the need-based scholarships are provided by Bocconi together with the Italian, um, with, together with the Lombardy region, which is the region where Milan is located. Uh, these are need-based scholarships. So for these, you need to fill in, uh, to complete uh, a scholarship application, giving information about, uh, about your um, uh, family's uh, income and assets and so on. And then, um, and these normally you fill in the application during the summer and you get uh, your answer in the fall around October. Uh, as a third possibility, I would also like to point out uh, the possibility of student loans uh, that the university has, uh, um, uh, has stipulated with some uh, financial institutions. Um, so let me go uh, very quickly to a couple of other slides. So then we can delve into your questions. Uh, housing, this is something that I normally um, tell students uh, at a later stage because there's no rush to, um, to, to think about the uh, housing application right now. But obviously I would like to, you to know that there is this possibility. If you are thinking about uh, on-campus on accommodation, there is this possibility. Bocconi does have residence halls. So there is something you can, uh, this is something you can definitely look into but it's something you can think about in uh, late spring. Um, and uh, also, um, this brings me to uh, another important point, which is, uh, first of all, on the 16th of February, we will have our um, open day. So if you, um, if you found this webinar um, interesting and you want to uh, deepen your knowledge of Bocconi a little bit more, that's the perfect, uh, perfect occasion to do so, uh, because we will have a, a specific program presentation of each Master of Science programs held by the program directors. Uh, you will be able to chat uh, with the current students, uh, as well as uh, uh, chat with uh, Bocconi staff, admissions uh, 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 staff, uh, the funding staff. So you can definitely uh, go deeper into each of these topics that we have uh, uh, very superficially covered today because obviously uh, we needed to um, to concentrate everything in the in the time that we have. And I saw a question in the chat about summer schools. Uh, Bocconi does offer a summer school and uh, um, it, it, the application is not open yet, uh, but it will be very soon. And it is definitely a good way, a good way to get a taste of the university um, while also doing a course um, which is worth uh, six credits. So that's also uh, quite, uh, quite useful. Um, okay, I was looking at the time and I think we are, uh, I think we are in time. Federica, what do you say? It's uh, 45 you are minutes. Absolutely on time, perfect. Thank you so much, Veronica, Tiago and Leah for your presentation. And I can see we have lots of questions. Some of them actually we already uh, on the way we covered during the presentation. Uh, there is one actually I can see that is actually coming from different um, participants asking about the background. So asking about, uh, for example, if I studied uh, mathematics or physics, am I still eligible to apply? And another question is about gap year. There was a, a student that due to the corona situation as, um, as a gap year on the CV. Is this a problem, Veronica, to apply? 
Um, so uh, thank you for uh, for those questions regarding the background. Uh, I would say that we welcome applications from any background, honestly. Um, uh, and one of the reasons why we ask for a GMAT or a GRU score is uh, definitely because we want to leave the background open, but we need to make sure that students have the um, necessary quantit quantitative skills uh, uh, to face our Master of Science program. Uh, then obviously you also uh, you, you also need to be sensible with this question and that there are some programs I can think about uh, finance or even economics, which is very quantitative. If you come from a more, I don't know, humanities background, then the program director might have, might have some doubts in admitting such a, pro, um, a profile because uh, in the end you're doing a master, so you're doing an advanced course. So obviously they cannot start from, uh, from let's say, basics. Uh, but overall, uh, uh, if I think about students coming from engineering or uh, uh, STEM subjects, uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's doable and it has happened uh, um, quite commonly already. Uh, and then you were asking about uh, the gap year. So no, uh, we doesn't disadvantage uh, our applicants at all. Uh, the, 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 and, and honestly, we are also uh, more understanding in this period and more flexible because we know that students have been faced with issues in uh, um, relocating in finding an internship so obviously that's that's quite understandable and let me also add one last point because i see a question um, uh, from patricio um, talking about the minimum score for the gmat or the gre and that's a, a question we get quite uh, um, uh, quite often and that's also quite hard to, to answer meaning that um, for sure we are very transparent about the fact that the ranked programs uh, international management and finance do require uh, a higher score because there is more competition there. We receive more applications. Um, but then obviously it also depends uh, which is the round you're applying to. Uh, um, the later rounds tend to be more competitive because there are uh, less places available. Um, it depends on the rest of your application. So how's your GPA, how's your profile? So it is looked at uh, uh, together with the rest of the, of the dossier. Thank you so much. There was another question also about jobs. So we've been talking about a lot of companies that are actually working in collaboration with Bocconi. And I also wanted to ask if there is some sort of career service that can actually guide new students while they are enrolled at Bocconi. Absolutely. And uh, well, uh, Leah already mentioned some of the uh, activities that they, that they organize. If I can, I will also unlight, uh, I highlight another aspect. Um, she was, uh, um, she was uh, speaking about all these events, uh, but you also need to be, I would say, proactive in taking advantage of their services. Because for example, they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, CV check um, possibilities. Uh, they organize uh, mock interviews so that if you make any mistake, uh, it's, it's a mock interview and you don't do that in front of the actual employer. Um, they do um, a lot of uh, seminars uh, to, 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 uh, to improve your skills also when you go to an interview or you do assessments. Um, so there is, uh, and then there is also a dedicated Master of Science uh, sort of account within the career service staff, one of, for each Master of Science program, uh, which is very useful because they know the industry very well and they can address it to the different uh, options. Thank you so much, Veronica. There was also another interesting question. It's about how early should I apply and if I already need to be graduated when applying? Uh, so, um, well, uh, you, uh, you do not need to, to already be graduated. Most of our applicants uh, are in their um, final year when they apply, so they're still studying. Uh, for sure, you need to, to, to finish your bachelor within October at the latest, but I would say that most of our international students are already done by the summer because they want to be able to, to, um, to focus on their Master of Science experience without you know, having any, um, uh, anything pending left with their uh, bachelor university. Um, and if I can, I would maybe ask either uh, Leah or Tiago uh, answer the question about uh, um, the possibility of working at the same time as we study for our master, uh, because I would say that there is one formal aspect which has to do with the visa. So if, you're, uh, if you are a non-EU student, 
uh, keep in mind that only part-time work is allowed with your study visa. So that is one aspect to keep into uh, consideration. And the other aspect, maybe I would ask um, one of the guys to tell uh, how, the, how the workload is, because I feel like in the first year would be much more challenging than in the second year. Uh, but second year, you need to find time to dedicate to the to the internship so it has to be something very flexible i think i'm always very wary uh, when i get this question because uh, um, i know that the, um, the, the the commitment uh, on, uh, requested by the master is, uh, is quite high um, right, so absolutely. do you want to take it tiago yeah i can start i can take go the first it. part and then you'll you'll speak but do you have so if you have input go ahead ladies first no, I was going to say because I am I am doing my internship at the same time, so I am aware of. I'm not going to lie; it's not the easiest to balance at all times. So I would say it definitely depends a lot on your ability. I would not recommend to have a full time job in the first year of the masters to anyone because also you want to enjoy your student life, and if you are working a full time job and you are also doing a full time masters, you will struggle, especially because Bukoni. I think you can derive a lot more value if you're going to classes as an attending student over a non-attending student. I think taking all classes non-attending is a mistake because you want to interact with your student, with the other students, you want to interact with the professors, you want to also forge connections to later on in life, to have your network, also to have a thesis professor later on. But for the second year, I do think it is feasible because especially if you're doing an internship, with the electives and the um, pieces that you have to do, if you know how to balance it out, I do think it's okay to be doing an internship and having one or two electives on the side or internship and thesis. Maybe you even find a thesis supervisor that wants to, that's what I'm doing. For example, I do my thesis and it's on the topic of my internship. So they both combine together and it just adds value. But I definitely think you have to really assess by yourself okay, will I have the capability to manage everything that is on my plate? Also, so you manage your stress levels, but go ahead, Tiago. I'm sure you have also many things to add on this. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So basically what I want to say, and I, I have lots of things to say regarding this aspect because I am uh, quite involved in, in, um, in some activities, um, quite a lot of them, I, I would say, and I would love to, to try and work at the same time with the activities that I have right now, but that would not be possible. I do know cases of people that are working at the same time. So this is basically an option uh, that you can take and you can benefit from the possibility of doing um, two exam sessions. Uh, if you have a, a scholarship, let's say, you can maintain the scholarship and leave two of the courses that you have to make to the September exam session. So let's say that's on the first semester. So each one of the courses has three, uh, three different dates for you to, to complete and to do the exam session. Uh, the first one tends to be in the beginning of January. So let's, let's say uh, this example is uh, for a course done on the first semester. So from you do you attend the lectures or you don't attend the lectures from August or end of August, beginning of September to uh, the beginning of December. And then you study for the exam, which would be in the beginning of January, first exam session. Uh, imagine you can't attend the first exam session because you have to work. You can leave it for the second exam session, which would be in the end of January. If you cannot attend the, the second exam session in the end of January, you can leave that course to the, the end of to the beginning of September, end of August, and that's the third exam session. So you can balance your, your workload uh, while the scholarships. Now, bear in mind that you have to, to do eight out of 10 uh, curricular units to maintain your scholarship. I think this is um, the, the rule for every master's degree. Uh, if someone uh, wants to correct me, um, go ahead. But I think this is the rule for every master's degree, at least for finance, I'm sure it is. Uh, and it has been slightly changed because of the COVID situation. So they gave us more flexibility in terms of uh, what we can and what we cannot do. All the all the material is saved on black on the on our platform, so we can watch lectures in different times of the day at the moment. So imagine if you're working uh, from nine to five and you cannot attend the lectures from nine to five, you'll have the the recordings and you can watch lectures uh, after you uh, you've done with your work. Uh, so I regarding that example, I know of a colleague of mine, a friend of mine that started working at Bain, so the consultancy company in Italy. They he's Greek. They wanted a Greek person who speaks Italian. So 
uh, right on right on sp on the spot for him, and he's working uh, full time. And his his objective is just to work part time while he studies. For so he was working. He will be working full time until the, the exam sessions. And on the exam sessions, he will have a part time job, uh, the same job, but just less hours for him to be able to study and do some of the coursework. Now, bear in mind, this is an internship, so. Uh, from August uh, to September, he will not have the internship, so he will be able to study for the third exam session. And I think this is how he's, uh, he is sort of balancing his, his workload and being able to do everything at the same time. Now, he's not in the Masters in Finance, he's in the Masters in Management, I think, or Economics, I'm not sure. Uh, all of the masters that I, that I just mentioned are uh, very heavy on workload in the first year. So do bear that in mind. Uh, now, regarding the second, sec second year, um, you have electives. In the master's in finance, in finance, it works the following way. So in the first semester, if you do an internship in the previous year or you intend to do an internship uh, during your, um, your stay in Bocconi, your master's degree, you have to do four electives during the uh, second year. And then the, so imagine you do the four electives right on the first semester. On the second semester, you don't have to do anything uh, re besides, uh, besides the, the, um, the thesis, but you can do the thesis as well on the first semester. So imagine you leave everything uh, to the first semester, you do everything in the first semester, you would have just the second semester of the second year to work and to do anything you want. So uh, bear that in mind, it's pretty flexible. You can uh, sort of rearrange the curricular units as, as, as much as you want. Of course, uh, inside the, the, the possibilities and the rules that the university imposes, but it is quite flexible. Uh, so you have this opportunity. And I think this uh, comes in favor of people that uh, need to work to pay the bills uh, while they are uh, at Poconi. So it's definitely possible. And I want to, to make that thing clear, especially in the second year. Perfect. Thank you so much, Leah and Tiago. There was a question, Veronica, about the application. So one, um, one person was asking if there is uh, an interview and in general, what is the best way to, uh, to get prepared for the application? So maybe Veronica and also you guys can share some advice. Uh, yeah, I would love to. Um, so uh, I would say a, a few, I think a few points on the application. Uh, well, first of all, um, the sooner you gather information about the application process, the better it is, uh, because it does take some time uh, to prepare for it. Um, so if we are thinking for the September 21, uh, 2021 intake, uh, it's not too late, but uh, you definitely need to focus uh, very well on GMAT or GRE if you don't have those at this stage, uh, because you're going to need some at least some weeks to, to, to prep for those tests. Uh, so that's definitely the main concern. So I would say um, both because it is an important element of our uh, evaluation process, but also it is the one where you need to work uh, to, 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 quite intensely on that to, to, to perform well. Uh, GPA, well, uh, GPA is, um, it, you cannot do a lot on that <laughs> normally. Well, you can, you can keep an eye on it. Uh, you can make sure that the next exam sessions will be done uh, at the best of your possibilities. But normally the GPA is quite uh, consolidated in, when you are applying uh, in, your, uh, in your final year. Um, and if I have to be to be very honest, those are the the the, the, the say the bedrocks, the foundation of the application itself. Um, however, um, I, I, I'm not discounting the importance of the CV or the motivational letter because program directors do go through all these elements. Uh, our classes are quite small. There are 85 students per class, more or less. So the program directors really take the time to, uh, let's say, visualize who's going to sit in front of them in September. Uh, they need to know that the people they admitted to the courses um, are suited to the programs and vice versa, that the programs can give them, uh, uh, can equip them with what they uh, need to go where they want to. Uh, because it's really a, a, a matter of fit between the student and the program. Um, so the students should, applicants should also take some time to work on the CV motivational letter uh, and, and motivational letter the suggestion is always uh, to be obviously very honest but also to show that you've researched the program that you know what you're applying into uh, what you're applying to um, 
because that's the best way to, to, to help the student to the program director make the connection between the program and the, and the students uh, themselves. Uh, so really taking time, doing the proper research, uh, reaching out if you have any question, any doubt, anything is not clear. Uh, we like to think that everything is uh, on the website, but we do know that everything is not so easily found if it's uh, not done by us. So uh, do reach out. There are many occasions that are our students uh, through the Unibody platform on the website and you can go into the course content. Uh, there's the open day, uh, there's us, uh, basically the, all the rest of the year answering questions. Uh, um, and again, I'll post the, I'll, maybe now I'll post the, um, our email address. Uh, so that's also an option. Thank you, Veronica. I'm not sure if Lee and Tiago would like to share some tips. I mean, you've been through the application, so probably you have some advice that you yeah. can give. Yeah, I would like to, Leah, if you want to, to go ahead first, otherwise I'll, I'll just... No, I, I can let you go first, gentlemen first this time. All right, all right, good. Thank you, perfect. So what I want to add is don't... Uh, don't miss don't don't think that having a low gpa means that you won't get into bocconi uh what i can tell you is that there's a heavy uh, heavy uh importance on the gmat or gre so let's say that if you have a low uh low gpa because you had to work or whatever other reason but you have a, a very good cv because you you engaged in uh, activities uh, voluntary work etc cetera, etc cetera, and you didn't dedicate yourself so much to the gpa you have an opportunity to change that using the gmat um so and they do give you that opportunity so let's say i have i, I know some some people that had low gpa but got into the masses in in finance which is uh, supposedly the most competitive one in Bocconi. Uh, they got into the masters uh, with a very good GPA, uh, with a very good GMAT score while having a relatively uh, low GPA. And now remember that this doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean that a low GPA doesn't mean at all that a person is less or more intelligent than the other. Uh, so this is basically a combination of two different two different scores to sort of reduce the the possibility of uh, there is ex existing some mistakes when uh when admitting the students and um so basically yeah so don't don't uh don't desperate don't be desperate just because you have a relatively low gpa uh, focus on the gmat and i'm sure you'll be able to get into Bocconi into the masses that you want and that's it thank you tiago yeah i just like to echo as well that i agree with tiago completely the balance of the application is just as important as having one very high score so also another thing that maybe like if I can add a, a little bit of a different perspective is in your motivation letter, I think it's very important, of course, to do your research and know why you want to apply, but it's also very important to show what you can bring to the program and what, what am I as a person going to bring to this class and where do I add value? How do I stand out? I'm sure you're all special people in one or two particular ways. So it's important to showcase this is how me as a person can add value and this is why I deserve it to be in this class. So I think that's a very important part as well. Just try to show your personality and try to think of real reasons why you want to be part of the program and just be very honest and real and not get discouraged if your GMAT score is low. And I think it's always one of those things that the balance is the most important thing. If you have amazing internships and your GMAT's a little bit lower, that's not gonna be the problem, I think. Thank you, yeah. Leah. Oh, sorry, Tiago, please go ahead. No, just, just one more thing. Don't be afraid to ask for opinion when you write your uh, reference letter or your motivation letter. Uh, yeah, motivation letter. Uh, because it's, uh, it's a thing that takes, takes some time if you want to, to, to construct a very good motivation letter. So, but uh, do take the time to write one and ask for your for opinion, whether it be your granddad, your, uh, your grandmother, your godfather, your godmother, your friends, your uh, family, whatever. But ask for opinion because they sure can give you uh, the other perspective and they can uh, increase, their, uh, increase your empathy when... Uh, so make you more empathetic when writing one of these letters. So it's definitely something that you should bear, bear in mind. Thank you. That's all. Absolutely. I think this is a very good point. Sometimes also having someone um, reading those uh, motivational letters, someone that does not know why you write the letter, that helps. So at least the person can give you an impartial view. Um, I can see that there are a few questions. We answered them during the presentation, but maybe Veronica, we can touch base a little bit on scholarships. So asking if there are any scholarship opportunity for international students. 
Yes, um, absolutely. So um, le, I would say uh, the answer is a definite yes. Uh, we um, um, just to give you an idea, and, and those are numbers that are actually verified. Uh, um, we uh, are somehow able, and by somehow I mean uh, taking into consideration the um, the overall uh, financial aid system to fund uh, one out of uh, four students at Bocconi. And uh, the, the main messages are. Um, it, the, 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 the majority of the financial aid system is for merit-based uh, awards. So in that case, uh, um, you do not need to, um, to, to worry about applying for the scholarship uh, because you are automatically considered in the selection process. So what you need to go to focus on is to uh, boost your application as much as possible um, in order for it to stand out uh, in the different application rounds. Um, however, need-based uh, need scholarship is a possibility because uh, even if Pocconi is a private university, it is recognized by the Italian Ministry um, uh, for uh, Education and Universities. So it, adhere, uh, to, to do, it adheres to a program um, of need-based scholarships uh, um, in, uh, in conjunction with the uh, Lombardy region. For these need-based scholarships, you can apply. The application is normally done in the summer. So pay attention that you do this application after having been admitted and have after having enrolled into the program. So the first payment, which is 2,000 euros, is something that you need to somehow budget. Uh, because even if you do get the scholarship, you will then uh, later on get refunded. But we still need you to make this commitment to confirm your place and block your spot, let's say. So you do the application in the summer. And you also need to know that you need some, uh, let's say, you need to, to, to be, um, uh, to, to, to have some patience and collect all the documents that are needed um, by the uh, funding office to verify your eligibility for the scholarship. And these have to do with your uh, family of origin, uh, in income assets, uh, bank returns, uh, and, and so forth and so on, as well as it, it happens with most uh, need-based uh, um, opportunities. Uh, but that's definitely an option as well. Veronica, let, let me just... Uh, yes, let, please, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Veronica. Let me just add that I have a friend that um, managed to get that, that last scholarship that you mentioned, so the, the need-based scholarship. And be prepared to, to, the, to need to translate all the material that you need uh, to Italian. Uh, this is one of the requirements, so be prepared to, to that. Perfect, thank you so much. So we're actually coming towards the end of our webinar and I'd like to thank Veronica Lee and Tiago for their time and all of you for being connected with us. I actually like to ask um, if you have like a final advice or tips you'd like to share with the audience tonight. We'd like to go first. Well, I mean, yeah. it's very generic, but I think the best advice is always to just be yourself and to I would definitely, it's not, it doesn't have to be for everyone, you know, so even if you think Bocconi is an amazing university, if it doesn't match your needs and you don't feel like it's the right university for you, you don't need to apply. There's other universities and there's other great places that you can go to, but if you do feel like you're at home and you feel like it's a place that you belong to, definitely apply because it doesn't hurt to apply, you know, even if it's a no, it's a no, if it's a yes, then it's great. And just make sure to actually go through the profile of the program and know what you're applying for. Look at the courses, look at the type of people, reach out to previous students that have done it. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Tiago, you can reach out to Veronica, just so, so you know whether you're making a good decision. Because even within Bocconi, there are so many programs and each of them specializes in something that's so different that it is important that you understand the curriculum and that you understand type of commitment, the type of skills you need, and the type of people that will be present at the program, just so you can make sure that you're getting the most out of this opportunity. Uh, that's it from me, guys, but always ask questions. Thank you, Leah. I, I totally agree with Leah. I would I would highlight the fact that you you should check the the syllabus of the of the master's degree 
So check which courses you'll be taking uh, for the whole masses. So you won't get surprised with the courses. So don't make that mistake. I would say that that's the biggest mistake. Imagine you get you get accepted into the masses, then you go into the masses, and then you you figure out, okay, this is not for me. This is too quantitative, or this is too subjective, or this is too theoretical. So be sure to check the syllabus of the masses, not not for the application letter, for the motivation letter, but for yourself, for you to know if this is the right program for you and which is the right program for you. Because I'm sure that Bocconi will have a right program for you if you want to follow your studies to continue your studies but be sure to check that and really lose the time to uh, construct a good cv and a good uh, motivation letter the cv that's what i can tell you is that the cv that we learn to do during the bachelor's degree depending on uh, where you took the bachelor's of course but uh, most of the times is not what a master's degree admissions um admissions um what do they call it? admissions um council is looking for so take time to verify what is the correct uh, curriculum what are they looking for and how to display the information so that it, you can help uh the uh, the council uh, take the decision and as Leah said, be yourself and don't be afraid to apply to a certain uh, master's just because you have a different background or a background that people think that doesn't fit into the master's degree. Uh, as I said, like you can have in my course, we have people from chemics and from physics taking the master's in finance. So it's not the, the most uh, you, you would think it's not the most suitable thing, but in reality, it is. It adds a, it adds up quite, uh, quite good. It's a very good complement um so yeah be yourself and take time during the application try to apply you don't have like it's a conditional offer so basically if you got if you get us you don't have to pay anything correct me if i'm wrong but i don't think right now you have to pay anything just to apply uh at least when i apply you don't have to pay anything so apply take your time take the time to apply when you get the result you take the decision but do take the time to apply because um Bocconi is a great university and you won't be disappointed Thank you guys for uh, for this. Uh, and yes, I, I mostly echo what they said. Uh, let me just uh, um, clarify very briefly. There is an application uh, fee, and then and, 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 um, Tiago was luckily exempted from uh, from doing that because he did his exchange about uh, Bocconi. But there is a one hundred euros application fee, um, and and this goes back to what the guys were saying. So really, take the time to understand if the program is for you, because we know that the application process uh, it's it's a commitment also in terms of time that you have to to, to put into it. So you should be sure about that uh, you're making an investment uh, uh, in the next two years of your life in terms of personal and professional growth so definitely uh, it's something that should be taken into consideration from our side uh, what we do is we strive to um to have programs that uh, are uh, that give you uh, i would say a valuable return on investment so that's uh, what we can do on our side <laughs> but deliver programs that hopefully um give you uh, give something back in in return um, and please do not hesitate to reach out in these, these current times, especially so it's not easy, you cannot come to campus, uh, you, you cannot meet people and, and talk with them, but there is ways to interact. Uh, it's uh, paradoxically easier because you can connect from anywhere and you can reach out to current students, to the staff, and we'll be uh, more, than, uh, more than happy to assist throughout the, the application process. Thank you so much, Veronica. In the chat, we're just going to remind you about an email address that you can actually reach out to if you have any further question. Uh, the virtual graduate open day will be on the 16th of February. You will also receive a, an email from us, Oxity, tomorrow, uh, where you will find all the useful information. And we will also be sharing with you an email to reach out to Veronica's team that will be able to assist you in any question you might have. So once again, I'd like to thank you, Veronica Lee and Tiago, for their time and for all of you for, for being connected. And we really look forward to seeing you soon at the next Bocconi webinar. And if you actually put an application through, I really hope that you get to meet Veronica Lee and Tiago in person. Thank you, Federica, and thank, thank you, you everyone. for joining. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice thank day. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Ciao.